When Bill Clinton was president, he appointed General Anthony Zinni commander-in-chief of the United States Central Command, which oversees the American military presence in the Middle East and Central Asia. General Zinni is now the chairman and acting president and CEO of BAE Systems, a defense contractor, and the co-author of this book, Leading the Charge, a new uh, book about leadership on the battlefield and in corporate boardrooms. And General Zinni joins us now in studio. Sir, welcome to Bloomberg News. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Mark. Good to why, be here. why did you write the book? Well, uh, I wrote a book uh, a couple of years ago about how the world is changing, uh, every re respect, uh, business and military, national security. And I was getting a lot of comments about uh, how people notice not only the changes in the environment, but the changes in what leaders had to do to lead in that environment. And it intrigued me. So I did a little research and looked at leaders that are succeeding and tried to pull out the things that sort of mark the new leader, the, the successful leader in this very dynamic and turbulent world. And speaking of turbulent, the turbulence uh, also uh, heading into the economic uh, in environment as well. Did that speed up your thought process? Did this give you a sense of urgency to write this now and what leaders might be needed to try to get us out of this? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, not only the economic conditions are deteriorating, uh, national security uh, events around the world, a whole series of things that, uh, that, that seem to be striking us now at this time, but particularly the economic conditions, the business world, uh, obviously I'm in that world now and seeing what was happening there as well as in the government and in the military. General, the, the book subtitle is Leadership Lessons from the Battlefield to the Boardroom. On the battlefield, you have to follow orders even if you don't agree with them. Not necessarily the same in the corporate environment. How do you, how do you deal with that? Well, it's very different. It isn't the kind of authoritarian structure and uh, rigid uh, discipline. And so your leadership style has to change somewhat. It's more collegial. Uh, it's more building consensus and, you know, for CEOs working with boards. Our company, for example, BA Systems, I'm the chairman of the American uh, corporate uh, entity under the parent in the UK. So it's even more complex with a, a foreign company as a parent company and how we interact with them on a global basis and how we maintain our security requirements in the U.S. But, sir, you're a career soldier. Does that lack of strict discipline disappoint you sometimes? No, I think it's challenging. I, I, and sometimes I think... you don't say, you know what, if this were a military <laughs> environment, things would be running a lot smoother? Well, i got to admit, sometimes I wish I could just put the stars on and make that decision. But you can't do that. <laughs> No. Talk to me about uh, the chapter self-knowledge. You said that one of your students had an interesting question. The student asked, how much can a person change? And you started with, it's a matter of will. Is that all it is? Yeah, I think so. I mean, we can get very set in our ways. And, and you see that especially, especially with more senior leaders. Uh, they don't adapt to the times. They don't adapt to the changing environment and business world, to changing markets. And, uh, and, and you see uh, businesses and you see structures and organizations just become obsolete. Absolutely. Does that apathy bother you? Are they just mailing it in? They just want to get their check? They feel like I've done my time, so now I don't have to come up with any new ideas? Well, I can just bide my time? I, I, I do think there's some of that, and there's some resistance because it's the way I've always done business and I've succeeded. And I think sort of you know, implied in your question is that... Uh, Sometimes the compensation is too high. I believe that, you know, compensation ought to be based on performance, individual and the organization. So translating that into corporate America, your recommendation would be what? Always be willing to adapt, be willing to learn? Absolutely. Never stop learning. Understand the environment you're living in. Uh, and adapt accordingly, and, and, and have an adaptive learning organization create one that can adapt to a changing environment. General, if I might ask you a question about defense, what, what are your thoughts on where the United States is going forward as we, as you mentioned, engage in this turbulent world? Well, you're seeing, obviously, a structure of a new strategy. Secretary Gates and others working on this now, the Quadrennial Defense Review. For those in the defense industry, we have to monitor that very closely. What programs will continue? What programs will not continue? We just saw the F-22 and others. Uh, we'll see a declining or, or at least flat uh, defense budget. Uh, so how do we grow the company? Uh, you, you look at potential acquisitions. You look at new markets. Uh, on the international stage in terms of uh, uh, defense industry. So there are several ways you can look at a strategic growth in this area. Uh, General, if you can hold on one second, because I just want to check something out. Uh, folks, can, can you stay through the break? I sure can. Uh, I, want, I have a couple more questions for General Zinni, and I was wondering if we could keep him through the break at least for a couple more minutes, because this is a fascinating book. It's a primer for anybody who's going through what corporate America is going through now. Uh, former General Anthony Zinni, he's going to stay with us through the break, and we'll be right back on Bloomberg News.
Welcome back. And if you're just joining us, we've been speaking with General Anthony Zinni. He's chairman and acting president and CEO of BAE Systems, a defense contractor. He's the co-author of this book, Leading the Charge, a new book about leadership on the battlefield and in corporate boardrooms. And the general has been kind enough to stay with us through the break. Uh, general, thank you very much. The Marine Corps Code, Honor, Courage, Commitment. How right. can that same code be applied in America's boardrooms? I think it's very applicable in the, today's uh, business world. Uh, we, we've seen uh, the lack of uh, ethical and moral uh, appropriate behavior. I think that's the issue of honor, uh, commitment to do the right thing by your employees, your customers, the products you produce, your corporate responsibility to the community and, uh, and elsewhere. Uh, and certainly I think it takes courage sometimes, especially in this environment, this economic if, if you're, environment. If you're a whistleblower, for example, it, it would yes. take courage to speak uh, up. Well, you know, e even in that case, too, and, and, and now leadership requiring the, the need to take risks sometimes. You want to survive or even grow a successful company, in the case of our company, you have to make some strategic decisions, and they could be risky, and that takes, a, that takes courage. General, uh, talk to me about the ethical dilemma you just spoke of. Uh, do people understand the significance and the seriousness of that. You're not just hurting your company, you're weakening the country in this. And I don't believe that I'm being too overly dramatic by saying you weaken the country by weakening America's ability to be a moral leader in the world if we don't have our own house in or order, specifically in corporate America. I think that's exactly right. And, and we're finding now that, uh, that people are angry and they won't deal with uh, companies or corporations that uh, have a chronic uh, uh, case of, of moral or ethical misbehavior. They don't want to be tainted by that, right? They don't want to be tainted by that. Customers don't want to do business with companies like that. So it's become good business besides just the right thing to do. General, we spoke in the last break about uh, a student who asked you a question and you incorporated that in your book. Yes. We should mention you're also an educator. You've been yes. teaching at Duke, uh, Cornell, William & Mary, VMI. What do you tell your students about their ethical obligations going forward as they approach graduation and then take their place as the future leaders of this country? Well, uh, I've taught ethics classes. As as it relates to business and governance and, and other areas in many of the institutions you mentioned. And, and I try to instill in them the importance of, of integrity, honesty, ethical behavior going forward, never to compromise that. You have to live with yourself. Uh, don't sacrifice that out of a misplaced sense of loyalty or out of a, a, a sense of material gain. You know, hold true to yourself. That's why I begin those classes with more of self-examination as to who you are. General, you get the same kind of thrill, it seems, by teaching young folks as it does when you were actively in the Marines and you had young soldiers under your charge? Absolutely. You know, I, and, and I want to say today's young people are magnificent. I, I'm impressed with what I see on the campuses. Uh, I think this generation is going to do us proud. General Anthony Zinni, Marine Corps general, retired and the author of Leading the Charge, Leadership Lessons from the Battlefield to the Boardroom. We, we should mention this was written uh, along with Tony Colts yes. as well. General Zinni, thank you so thank much. You, it's Mark. a pleasure. I appreciate thank it. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's Crafts